The girl with the golden hair who was writing songs at the age of six but shied away from the spotlight of success. And a Norwegian-born girl who led a dramatic childhood and moved to Sweden where her talent was spotted. Both were destined for fame and became the two female lead singers of the most successful Swedish music group, ABBA. In this edition of The Greatest, Agneta Ferskog and Annie Fried Lingstad take center stage. Who's the greatest? You decide. April the 5th, 1950, in the Swedish town of Jönköping. A music lover at the tender age of six when she wrote her first song, Four Small Troll, Two Little Troll. She joined a dance band and a song she wrote for them became her first single. In 1967, it shot to number one on the charts and a star was born. ABBA expert and writer of several books on the band, Carl Magnus Palm. Let's start with Agnetta. Now, she had quite a successful solo career before ABBA even started, didn't she? Yes, she did. She started recording when she was 17 years old and she had a huge hit with her very first single, which was a song she had written herself called I Was So In Love. And it just uh, snowballed from there. Annie Fried Lingstad, better known simply as Frieda, was born on November the 15th, 1945 in Norway. Unlike Agnetha, her early days were tough ones. Frieda's early days were quite dramatic in her personal life, weren't they? Yes, Frieda's father was a German soldier and her mother was a Norwegian teenage girl. So she was born just after the end of World War II and she thought her father had died for more than three decades. She thought he was dead and he suddenly popped up from nowhere. And her mother died when she was just one or two years old or something. And so she grew up with her grandmother. They moved to Sweden from Norway and they were very poor and there were lots of hardships. So she had it tough. As a teenager, Frida also joined a dance band and in 1967 got her big break when she won a talent contest in Stockholm. Soon after that, EMI came knocking on her door. But before the other days, Frida didn't have as much commercial success as her singing partner-to-be, Agnetha. Agnetha was definitely the one who was most successful before ABBA formed. Frida was a bit unfortunate. The material was perhaps just slightly more sophisticated and her image was a little more sophisticated and I think Agnetha was more successful because she had a more sort of direct approach. She was a more, in quotes, natural performer. She had a sort of innocence that really appealed to people at the time. And I think that was the difference. Year, year, all... In 1970, Agnetha and Frida, together with their fiancés Bjorn Ulvaeus and Benny Andersson, were part of a cabaret show together. It wasn't long before the boys asked the girls to sing with them. The ABBA story had begun, and 1974 was a very happy year for all four when they won the Eurovision Song Contest with Waterloo. Jana Schaffer, famous in his own right, was a guitarist on many of ABBA's hits, including Waterloo. He was a leading musician with ABBA from the very start to the very end also playing on some of Frida and Agnetta's solo albums. Jana, you played on Agnetta's 1970 album Som Jag Er As I Am, didn't you? So you worked with her from the very early days. Did you spot her potential then? Did you think that she was bound for success? Yeah, she knows a lot about music and she plays the piano very good. And she has some certain ideas, musical ideas. She always knows what she wants. Janne says Frida was not so involved as Agnetha in musical arrangements, but was always eager to get the best sound. Was Frida and Agnetha's makeup, hair and costume artist when they toured Russia and Australia? She told me some tales from the powder room, including a little wig trouble. I put one of them on. I think it was Frida's. I put them on really bad. So in the middle of a dance number, it just spun away from her head and just flew over the stage and you know it was their first gig in Australia the first tour you know it felt like I should just take the first flight back 
if things did go wrong in the powder room, so to speak, mm. how did they react? Would they get upset? Would they get angry? Or were they quite cool, calm and collected? Absolutely no big deal at all. Okay, so who of the two, Agneta or Frida, took you the longest to get ready? Hmm. Actually, I think it was Frida. But maybe if she hears this, she, she tells me I'm wrong or something. But I, I have a memory that it is Frida. Agnetha was sort of, ah, it'll work, it's okay, all the time. How would you describe Agnetha? She's a very down-to-earth person. It's very easy to relate to her, since I'm coming from a small town and she's coming from a fairly small town. A very um, nice and gentle person and a bit shy. Doesn't need to be in center or in focus. She ends up there anyway, but that's not her main purpose. She likes to be at home, you know, she's like a house cat. What about Frida? What was it like working with her and what's she like? Frida is the person I still see a lot and she's quite opposite to Agnesa because Frida likes to be in center, she likes to talk, she's very social. She can start a discussion with anyone and have a good time. Uh, Agnetha can that too, but in another way. She doesn't look for it, so to speak. And three days, she got a big temper. In that sense, she sometimes can be difficult to work with because she can get really upset once in a while, and then two seconds later, she's really rumours, it's almost part of pop folklore that there has been a rift between Agnes and Frida. What have you heard as an author of From Abba to Mamma Mia? What have you heard? I don't think there really was a rift. I think that's something people would like to believe. There is a lot of drama in the Abba story, but there's, it's drama on another level. I think they were very supportive of each other. I think it was, you know, it's lonely at the top sometimes and they could support each other in the respect that they both knew what the other one was going through with the media attention and the attention from the fans and all the pressure with being a star. They have admitted, both of them, that they have very different temperaments and a different outlooks on life and it happened that they clashed as friends do, as colleagues do but there was never really a serious rift or they never really outright hated each other as the rumors would tell you. Of course there was some arguing once in a while but wherever you go on your radio station or at my office people fight or have arguments about something because it's a creative business. But all in all a lot of respect and a lot of fun times. Everyone was having a good time. But it stopped being so fun. Both Agneta and Frida went through divorces with their fellow singing partners and husbands, Bjorn and Benny. Guitarist Jana Schaffer describes the not-so-good times when they recorded their last two tracks, Under Attack and Cassandra. I remember that it wasn't the same feeling when we recorded the last two tracks, actually. You could feel it in the studio that it was not that happy feeling as it was in, in the beginning, actually. You know, on the last two tracks, it was more like, let's do the job and finish, get it finished. 82 was the end of the road for ABBA, but Agneta and Frida kept themselves busy, reviving their solo careers. After ABBA's split, the media here have often portrayed Agneta as a Greta Garbo-style recluse. How far is that a true picture of her, Yana? Uh... I think she wants a private life. I think she wants to stay as a normal person, a normal Swedish person. I think she's, she doesn't feel comfortable with the, with the attention she gets sometimes. So she wants to be a, just an, any ordinary Swedish girl or female. I think Greta Garbo was much more of a confusion. But Agneta is a very, very nice person, very happy. She has, she has a lot of humor, I think. Sometimes I happen to see her in a, rest, a restaurant or something, and she's always very nice and always shouts, yeah, hey, you know, come and sit down for a while, and, and we talk about old memories. Agneta says she's no recluse, but admits it's not her thing to do interviews. 2004 saw the release of her first album in 17 years. As for Frida, she made a comeback in 1996 with a Swedish album. She's now mainly devoted to charity work, but from time to time does appear as a guest vocalist on other artist records. After the group's break, ABBA's songs live on in the hugely successful musical Mamma Mia. 
But when it comes to going solo, Karl Magnus Palm says Agneta and Frida have been victims of their success. I think they both started out quite successful. They had hits in America and in Great Britain and the album sold, you know, a couple of million each globally, which is quite respectful. But after that it went downhill, I think. And, I, you know, they were a bit unfortunate because they came out of ABBA and people had expectations of them as the singers from ABBA rather than seeing them as the individuals and yet and Frida. For you, who's the queen of ABBA, would you say? I think there were two queens, Frida and Anietta together. And when one of them had an off day, the other one could take over as the queen of ABBA. My favorite song, if I had to choose one, is, is The Winner Takes It All, which is sung by Agneta, so that's, that's a clue, perhaps, I guess. The winner takes it all! The shy one with an appealing innocence that perhaps brought her a little more fame than she bargained for. And the singer with a sophisticated sound who thrived on her pop star status. Abba's Agneta and Frida, who's the greatest? Now you can decide. Ooh, yeah.